3.45 a.m. What time is it right now? It looks like it is 11.25. So we have about 20 or so minutes of this tornado warning that we are breaking into right now. So let me go ahead and pull this up a little bit. Just bear with me here. We're working on this. So here is that area that they have been watching. It's gonna be near the McClellanville area. So you can see right back here, where that storm is. We've been watching a couple of areas for rotation this morning, been some down just off the coast of Beaufort, uh, been watching some that have been working closer and closer to uh, the Charleston area. But right now, the one that we are watching is closer to the McClellanville area. So if you are in this area, you need to make sure that you are taking cover at this very moment. So let's go ahead and pull up velocity so that you can really see where this is at. So let's go ahead and zoom on in here here and there it is right there so you can see we move this up here so it's not popping up all too well on this but you can see where there is some indication of some rotation I'm trying to zoom this in and out a little bit let me see here so this is going to be, it's going to be somewhere in this area. It's pretty broad rotation, but again, if you are in this area, you need to make sure that you are taking cover. So this will be uh, near Cape Romaine, moving north. Let me go ahead and pull up a couple of other locations for you uh, here. But you can see where we have uh, radar has detected some uh, rotation. Try and get my mouse to work right here. Um, so we'll go ahead and zoom on out just a little bit uh, so you can see it's very broad it looks like it's not it's been holding together just enough for the National Weather Service to issue this warning um, but again let me go ahead and X out of this right here uh, pull up some more coordinations for you that way you know where this is at um, so this will include uh, the, the McClellanville area uh, until 11.45 a.m. We'll go ahead and pull up satellite radar yet again, and you can see that it's moving very quickly. Let me go ahead and see uh, how fast this is moving. Uh, so this is moving north at 40 miles an hour. So we'll go ahead and pause this radar right here. So you can see it's pushing on shore right now. And there is some lightning detected with this, but again, the main thing that we are looking for is that rotation. So if you are in this area, let me go ahead and zoom in and give you just a few more street uh, names possibly. Uh, so I'd say South Santee, if you are in this area, North Santee, quarantine, I'd say you probably should be uh, taking shelter right now. Uh, of course, the McClellanville area. Uh, let's see if we can't zoom on in. It's not going to show me a whole lot in the way of roads. Uh, Santee Gun Club Road. Um, we go up towards North Santee River Road, uh, Wicklow Hall Drive. These are going to be some of the areas that you will want to be in and you will want to be taking uh, cover as this happens right now. Uh, this is traveling heading north at 40 miles an hour. So let me get out of the way here and see if I can't work the mouse from right here so I'm not blocking your view. Uh, so this is traveling north. So I'd say if you are in the Georgetown area, I'd be monitoring this one closely. Uh, McClellanville, of course. Um, so this goes, uh, I'd say probably Polly's Island, you wanna be watching this. Um, it's held together just enough for the National Weather Service to issue this tornado warning. Now, we see this a lot with these tropical systems, right? Whenever we have a tropical storm, a hurricane, we have these storms that really start to build up over the ocean. They gain all that energy from that water because those waters are so warm, right? They'll start to push on shore, and then they're meeting with all the buildings, all the, all the geography, all the topography, right? And that's when they're gonna start to really build on up and that's when we're going to start to see more rotation and that's exactly what we have seen. Now even though this isn't a tropical system, this is still uh, a nor'easter so we're still seeing those storms develop over the ocean and they're pushing on shore uh, as we speak. So uh, let me see if we have any updates, uh, maybe any storm reports. I'm not seeing a whole lot in the way of storm reports quite yet. 
bear with me. I've got, I've got my phone popped up with the National Weather Service. Uh, they are, um, but they have been updating. Uh, so even, even National Weather Service has said, you know, looking at it on velocity. So I'll pop up that velocity scan and you can typically see where those couplets are. And that's where we've been watching since about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, we've been watching a couple of them just offshore. They've been down a little bit further to our south, you know, just a little bit offshore of Seabrook, just a little bit offshore of uh, Beaufort. Uh, those ones didn't hold together enough to uh, spawn any type of tornado warnings, but this one did, even though you can't really pick it up on velocity too much, they went ahead and still uh, were able to follow it. And so they were able to um, uh, put out that warning. So we'll go ahead and zoom in. And again, it's not going to be very clear when we're looking at it, but I would like to say that this is going to be it right here. So what we have is you've got the red which means that those winds are going away from our radar. And then you've got the green, you've got that, that wind going towards the radar. You just get that enough, a little bit of rotation there. And that's where we're gonna see that radar indicated um, that tornado warning. Uh, so another thing with these kinds of systems, right, is these tornado warnings aren't gonna be long. They're gonna be very brief as, uh, you know, they're just moving so quickly and they're just gonna be brief spin-ups. Uh, and that's what I was mentioning last night. You know, the, the severe threat was low, but it wasn't at zero, but it's always good to mention, you know, the possibility of a brief spin-up. So we'll go ahead and pop up radar once again. That way you can see what we've got going on again. So if you are just now tuning in, we do have a tornado warning in effect until 1145 uh, for portions of Charleston County, and this will include the McClellanville area. Now, fortunately, once these storms start to move a little bit further onshore, that's when we're gonna start to see them weaken, but this one's still holding on pretty well. And let me stop that right here. So. Another thing that you typically see with these tornado warnings is you'll typically start to see that bow start to form. And my master control guy and I, uh, we've actually been watching it, uh, a couple of them this morning start to form, but then they just lose that little bit of energy. The water's just not that warm. It's in the middle 50s, but sometimes you've got just enough strength to really add that juice. And so you can kind of see a little bit. It's kind of hard to make out how it's kind of starting to form that little bit of a bow. Uh, it's not that classic one that you typically see, uh, but certainly still holding on to a little bit of rotation. I'll be curious to see if we hold this until 11:45. I think think they might keep that one. So we'll go ahead and zoom on in. So if you are, let me go ahead and pull up a uh, velocity yet again so that you can see uh, just where this rotation is. And then we'll go over a couple of roads that if you are living on or a couple neighborhoods that you need to seek shelter. So let's go ahead and pop this up right here. So it's going to be up towards McClellanville. Um, okay. So I'm actually texting Dave also now. Uh, fortunately, it looks like, not fortunately, but there is a severe thunderstorm warning, it looks like, for Georgetown County. Uh, so that's a good sign that this storm is weakening, but it's still good to just take shelter, you know, make sure that you are in the lowest level of your home. Make sure that you are away from all and any windows that you can. You're going to have that debris. Even though this is probably just a brief spin up, it might not even be touching the ground. You still want to watch for that flying debris. So we look at this here, right? And I think that couplet, it should be, I think that's it right there. Oh, well, that, I think that's going to be it right here. So I'm not sure if it's really popping up. It's hard because it's further away from the one radar. But if I were to bet, that would be it. So let's go ahead and pop up satellite radar one more time. And I'll just show you, you know, even if you are not affected by this tornado warning, you've still got this, um, this thunderstorm moving through your area. So let me go ahead and pause this. 
We've got some very heavy rain moving through regardless. Had a couple of lightning strikes pretty close to Mount Pleasant. Um, I heard some good thunder earlier on. So fortunately, we haven't seen a whole lot in the way of thunderstorms, but you've got just enough instability to really um, uh, allow for the rotation to take place. So we'll head up here. This is going to be near that rotation. So McClellanville, it uh, looks like you might be okay, but you'll still want to stay inside. It's still very heavy rainfall, and there's still lightning nearby. But if I were to guess, I believe this is going to be the area uh, that this tornado warning uh, will be for. So if you are up towards North Santee, even South Santee, I would still stay inside. Uh, Canes, quarantine, uh, these are all areas that you should be taking cover right now um, just because there is some rotation. Now, I believe that's going to be up closer to Georgetown County, so a little bit further south here. Uh oh, the mouse is acting funky. All right, here we go. Uh, so, ooh, here we go. Uh, so I'd say if you are uh, Santee Gun Club Road, please make sure that you are taking shelter right now. Uh, looks like that whole neighborhood, uh, regardless if there is a tornado touchdown, a confirmed tornado or not, uh, there's still going to be some flying debris. There's still going to be some heavy rain and there's still lightning nearby. You need to take shelter. Again, the lowest level of your house, of your apartment. Uh, so make sure that that... Um, that you are taking shelter. So good news is, is National Weather Service has expired that tornado warning, which means that there is simply not enough rotation being identified to continue this warning. So let's go ahead, show one more scan of velocity before we get off the air. Uh, just wanna make sure that you guys are still staying safe, staying safe and make sure that you are staying inside. Again, lowest level of your house, uh, away from windows. Make sure you've got your pets um, if you can, if you've got just enough time. Uh, but it looks like that rotation has broadened more. So that's why they go went ahead and expired that tornado warning. Uh, but still, this is a very dangerous storm with history of rotation. Uh, so if you do live um, along the coast in Georgetown County, We'll go ahead and pop up radar one more time and then we'll hop off the air, but we're gonna wait one more second just to make sure, give it another minute or two. Uh, but I'd say if you are up in Georgetown, Polly's Island, uh, of course, I believe that was quarantine that I'd seen, Canes, Bell Isle Gardens, we still have a history of rotation, still a, a storm that will be moving on into your area. I mean, you can see that lightning right there. Let me go ahead and pause this right here. We've still got lightning strikes being detected on radar. So you'll still want to make sure that you are staying inside, taking cover uh, during this storm, regardless if there's a tornado warning or not. So uh, National Weather Service went ahead and expired it again with these kinds of things. Uh, you see these a lot with those, those tropical systems. Um, they're gonna be very brief and they might not even touch the ground, but you still have to be careful of some flying debris. Uh, so again, that has gone ahead. They've gone ahead and expired that tornado warning. It was supposed to expire at 1040 or excuse me, 1145, but they went ahead and expired that. Uh, but still make sure you take some cover uh, and stay inside and in just enjoy a lazy Sunday. Otherwise, we will be back here tonight at six o'clock. Uh, we will continue to break in if needed, if there are uh, any more warnings. But for right now, looks like McClellanville, you are in the clear now, but still want to stay inside, take cover. It's still going to be storming and raining out there. We'll send it back to regular programming right now. Hey, everybody. First alert, Weather Day, Chief Meteorologist Bill Walsh. Tornado warning issued for northern Charleston County. We The National Weather Service in Charleston has issued a tornado warning for portions of Charleston County in southeastern South Carolina until 11.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. At 11.21 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located near Cape Romaine, moving north at 30 miles an hour. Hazard, tornado. Source, radar indicated rotation. Impact, 
Flying debris will be dangerous to those caught without shelter. Mobile homes will be damaged or destroyed. Damage to roofs, windows, and vehicles will occur. Tree damage is likely. Locations impacted include Cape Romaine, Santee Coastal Reserve, Cape Island, and Lighthouse Island. Heavy rainfall may hide this tornado. Do not wait to see or hear the tornado. Take cover now. One, we've had up to EF2 winds over 135 miles an hour in some places like on John's Island when that's happened in the past. Uh, so again, if you're up that way, uh, this is again one of these uh, areas that we're watching. This is the old village of McClellanville right here. Uh, and just at the uh, just on the other side of uh, that as you go up the coast up toward Winyaw Bay. But it looks like this is going to kind of push up into northern Charleston County, uh, maybe even to parts of southern Georgetown County or even into Williamsburg County. So as I back up here just a little bit, you can see there's the warning area right there. Again, as we take a look at that, uh, let me also see if I can't pull up uh, the uh, the current alerts. And again, this is the actual alert uh, that we have for you right there. That is going to be until 1145 tornado warning continues. We also have the flood uh, warning continue, flash flood warning continues till one o'clock for everybody else. But if you're up in the McClellanville area right now, this warning right there, that's the one that we have uh, that has been just issued. Again, just on the other side of uh, the old village here as you make your way offshore. So again, uh, this, and as I kind of pull this out a little bit and put on the velocity, this is showing a pretty good rotation. I'll get a little bit closer. And again, this morning until 1145 here this morning as we zoom on in here just a little bit. Here it is. Uh, there you go. You get to see this just off the uh, coast here. Again, it's a little on the broad side. Uh, a lot of times you look for a very tight couplet. Now, as these move across the land, they'll encounter some friction. Uh, also, they're moving into more stable air. So I don't know if we'll see this thing that's going to last that long, but it could certainly cause some damage. Uh, and you might want to be certainly in the lower level of the house, away from windows. You, you know, the usual tornado uh, precautions in that area of McClellanville. Uh, and as I zoom out here just a little bit, again, there's that area. But you see kind of spinning. It's moving pretty quick. So it's going to move up and over that area. And it's a small area that we are warning on. It's just up in the northeastern part of uh, Charleston County. Let me zoom in here just a little bit. I'll zoom in uh, with our little zoom tool right here. And you can get a little bit closer to kind of see kind of where that actual uh, that area is. And we've been seeing these convective storms kind of offshore, moving onshore. And I don't expect this to be an all-day thing. Uh, as the storm, the low itself moves along the coast, the you know, the traditional, you know, severe area or the warm sector of the storm will be kicked more to the east of us. Uh, but there's McClellanville right there. Uh, so if you're north or right in the village or just, you know, north of there, uh, right up there along, uh, say, the Santee River, the lower Santee River, that's where the, the current warning is till 1145. So, again, that is something uh, that will continue. And there's the convection. You can even see the lightning and, and uh, you're probably hearing some thunder up that way as well. As I uh, get a little bit closer here, let me see how that looks now with the couplet. Again, it's just off the coast. There's not much other. There's, there's a couple of areas that show some rotation here, but it doesn't look like that those are going to be issues at this point. But as we zoom on in here to our velocity product, again, this is where we look for rotation. This is where we can see whether the storm is getting better organized or it's maybe loosening up as far as the rotation. Again, we look at the uh, the rotating storm and there's just a broad rotation right there, again, pushing up toward the old village, which is right about here. So if you are up there, definitely uh, be in your safe spot up in McClellanville, northern Charleston County. And as I zoom on out here just a little bit, we have, you can see you can see that rotation right there with the algorithm. Uh, and there are some others, but these this one right here actually shows on the velocity in the weather service. We were kind of watching that here just a little while ago. We also have uh, this area of convection just down to the uh, south. You can see all the way just south of Charleston. And this is kind of training up. In other words, coming right up from the ocean and there's more behind it, almost like a train, you know, one locomotive after another. And it's just, just, it's just piling up a lot of rain. We also see a little TVS out here out uh, to our west. So again, we're sort of in a, a small window for severe weather, at least over the next hour or two, maybe a couple of hours, uh, you know, as we get, like I said, close to what we call a warm sector of the storm. So some of these uh, acting almost like a tropical system with, with bands moving on shore uh, that continue to rotate. We also have some power outages I want to talk about. Mount Pleasant, uh, 1,491 customers out, uh, according to Dominion Energy over to Park Circle, 1,120 uh, 
uh, folks are out of power. And I know Paul Fisher and the folks over there at Dominion continuing to keep an eye on that. We're also keeping an eye on the power over at uh, Santee Cooper and also the uh, Berkeley Electric uh, could see some more uh, power outages because, you know, the wind's going to continue as we make our way into the afternoon as well. Uh, but again, as I back out here just a little bit, uh, let me pull up the uh, the warning once again and make sure we're still uh, watching that. The alert, uh, of course, for uh, the system, uh, this one Area just a very small area up around McClellanville until 1145. That is the tornado warning right there. So as we zoom on out here just a little bit, you can still see a lot of convection down here to our south, uh, and that's going to push on shore. With the tide is up right now, it's high, and we are seeing a lot of flooding out there. So we're watching that pretty carefully. Gusty winds as well. Look at some of these wind speeds, especially along and just off the coast. We're seeing we uh, Shea Gibson just mentioned I think 55 miles an hour just a little while ago was the highest gust 55 uh, so 45 50 along the coastline not out of the question even back away from the coast we're seeing some pretty gusty winds and the storm is still to our south it's still going to move by us this afternoon so that's going to continue to kind of push by us into the afternoon hours so uh, again that's going to continue uh, you know to, to bring us the wind into the afternoon hours let me show you a live picture again this is back over toward the Yorktown you can see just how much rain we've had so far over three inches in fact one person was just telling me let me see. Uh, Oscar says 3.5 over on John's Island. So that's, you know, that is adding up uh, as you take a look at the, uh, you can see right there with the uh, live camera and the uh, and the gusty winds pushing that on shore. Again, the tide up right now uh, and it's up over 8. We were forecasting 8. It's actually up over 8.5 in some places even higher. So again, just be very careful out there if you have to drive around. More rain as far as this afternoon, yes. Uh, now this forecast is not including what we've already had. This is between now and the end of the event. So we could see another inch, inch and a half of rain on top of the two plus or three plus inches we've already had. So, and even up toward, uh, say, Georgetown, up toward, uh, say, Myrtle Beach, you could see an additional three plus inches of rain up that way for a storm total of over four in some places. And we'll probably have a storm total of around two and a half to three inches, kind of common up and down the South Carolina coast. So again, we'll just kind of keep an eye on that. As I back up here, I just want to see what we are as far as uh, this uh, warning situation. Again, we've been watching this rotating storm here just to the uh, south of Georgetown or just to the east of the McClellanville area. And on the velocity, uh, we could get a little closer here. You can start to see that couplet. It's still kind of a broad rotation, uh, but we're watching it pretty carefully. Let me zoom in here just a little bit. And again, you can see as we get closer, there it is. This is the area right here uh, that, that's in question. Probably a water spout off the shore. It will move on shore, classified then as a tornado. So that's why the warning goes until 1145. Uh, and again, you might be hearing the rumble of thunder as well, not just here, but up and down the coast. So you got the thunder, you got the rain. And of course, with that kind of uh, velocity, we'll have to watch. It's a little more broad right now. But there are some pretty gusty winds out there. Again, as I mentioned, we're getting 40, 50 mile an hour wind gusts. Let me back up here just a little bit and show you up and down the coast. There's more rain just down to our south, as you see, really from Charleston southward. Uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, pretty much heavy, heavy shower activity. Uh, and this one band that's, that's just, you know, really from Charleston right back down here, down along the coast. There's heavy, heavy rain with that. A lot of heavy rain for you folks up in Georgetown uh, right there. And it looks like we uh, have a new alert. Let me pull that new alert up here for us. Uh, this is going to be probably a severe thunderstorm warning. Yep. Uh, this is going to be a severe thunderstorm warning for Georgetown. That's that same system. That goes until 1215. So the tornado warning goes until about 1145. But we're going to extend that into Georgetown County. The Georgetown uh, National Weather Service office up in uh, Wilmington issues these warnings. And that's going to be for a severe thunderstorm warning until 1215 here. Again, because it's the same system, we were just Tracking. Again, as I uh, zoom in here just a little bit, you can see there's that just that heavy area convection. So we are seeing the rotation. Um, and again, if you are in those areas, if you're in northern Charleston County, southern Georgetown County, just be in your safe spot just in case because those little systems can spin up really fast. And we could see EF0, EF1 winds over, you know, 70, 80, up to over 100 miles per hour rotating around uh, what could be, uh, you know, a tornadic cell or a water spot moving on shore. And there's that other activity I was just talking about just down to the uh, south right here. There's Charleston. 
There's Georgetown with the warnings we talked about. We do have the flood warnings, the flash flood warnings. And this train of moisture all the way to the south, see that? That's going to continue to just kind of push up along the mid coast all the way northward. So there it is. And you can see quite a bit of rain here. These are where the heavy, heavy bands, almost tropical type rains, even though it's not a tropical system, it's a cold core system getting its energy from aloft versus the water. But again, we are firing up a lot of this energy. There's a lot of convergence going on right here. And that's creating a lot of lift with the amount of moisture we have in the atmosphere. That's why we're seeing so much rainfall here. Again, that's the mid coast right there all the way north. Now, just south of Charleston right now, we're still seeing rain, but mostly lighter rain back over Beaufort, back over toward Walterboro, uh, back inland. Uh, the real main event right now is going on from the metro area with the flooding. Oh, by the way, um, Marissa, our digital person, just said 30 plus roads are either closed or might be closed. I think she said 38 a little while ago. That's a lot of roads within the Charleston County metro here. And that includes parts of, you know, Mount Pleasant all the way back, you know, up toward, uh, say, the uh, northern Charleston County. So there's a lot of roads closed right now because of the water because of the flooding that's going on. And that's why we have the flash flood warning continue till one o'clock. But look at this train of moisture all the way offshore that continues to push up here. So if you're Charleston County North, that is gonna be very heavy rain over the next hour or so. Again, as we watch that very, very carefully. And then of course, as I show you the alerts right here, let me pull up the alerts real quick. Uh, again, this is gonna be the area that we're watching. That of course is the severe thunderstorm warning and the tornado warning. The warning for the tornado till 11.45 and the uh, the the uh, severe thunderstorm warning up here uh, goes until 12:15, and then of course you've got the flood warning, uh, the flash flood warning going until uh, about one o'clock this afternoon. Now the storm itself is still down here to the south. It is progressing to the north and east, and it is a very potent storm. It's going to be a big nor'easter for the northeast. Probably see 50, 60 mile an hour winds up there. Doesn't look like it's going to be a giant snowmaker, but it is going to be a big rainmaker for the mid-Atlantic all the way north. Might be some snow back inland parts of New England, possibly back into parts of Pennsylvania, uh, depending on how it sets up up there. Uh, but for our purposes, this is a rain event until probably 7 or 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, the future tracker has, and you may see some breaks, you know, as the storm comes up, we might get a little bit of drier air here. Uh, but again, what we're looking at is a lot of wraparound moisture. So for us, this whole thing keeps going until probably you know, seven or eight, nine o'clock tonight with the winds, with the gusty conditions as we take a look at that. And again, this is the tornado warning here till 1145. That's the severe thunderstorm warning till 1215. Down along the south coast uh, from Charleston southward, very heavy rainfall as we just watch all that moisture and it just continues to come right up here. It's like a river of moisture. You heard about the atmospheric river. This is sort of what this is. It's, it's really just a, it's a flow of moisture, an excess of moisture that continues to just drop heavy, heavy rain fall in the metro area and of course back down into northern uh, Charleston County. Let me get a little bit closer here uh, and just to kind of see where we are as far as the roads and whatnot. Uh, we, like I said, 30 plus roads are already closed or are going to be closing. Now it looks like the heaviest rain is now pushing on up into Mount Pleasant, Wando, Hugie, all the way up that way. The downtown, the metro right now, let me get you a little closer here. There's the metro right now. And again, we're looking at, you know, uh, moderate to heavy rain continues there down toward uh, Mount Pleasant, down toward the groves and whatnot and uh, the bottom line is as we get a little bit closer here uh, you can see all the way downtown to the uh, say the the peninsula and a little bit further south and east you can see the metro area still seeing some moderate rain although the heaviest stuff now is kind of pushed a little bit further to the north but some of these roads are already closed down toward Lockwood Rutledge be on the lookout there heavy flooding as well so all of that plus the warnings that we just talked about uh, let's get a little closer look again at that couplet we were tracking again this is for the uh, tornado warning goes until 12 uh, till 11 45 as we zoom on in here just a little closer let me get you closer to that and you can see uh, we are looking at uh, possibly this system kind of holding its own right here as you look at it we look for rotation here the inbound and outbound winds uh, to the uh, radar site and once again uh, this is McClellanville right about here this is along the coast and that's kind of why we've been watching that uh, so as far as the alerts go we do have that one 
tornado warning, which we jumped on and gave you the first alert to right away, that's right here, and that goes until 1145. And then you've got the other warning right up in here. This is the severe thunderstorm warning, and that goes till 1215. So if you are up in, say, Georgetown County, uh, right there from Georgetown South, Winyaw Bay, over toward uh, Marysville, back down along the lower Santee, uh, and again, all the way back over to McClellanville, there's the village here. Looks like this couplet will might just be just to the east of the village, but definitely be in your, your safe space, away from windows, bottom part of the house. And again, just in case this thing moves on shore as a water spout uh, or tornado will be reclassified once it gets on shore uh, as a tornado. That's why that warning was issued. So let me uh, go ahead and zoom out here just a little bit. Again, we also have uh, the flood warnings going on uh, back into Charleston uh, in the metro area and all the way along the coastline here, the flash flood warnings because of the tremendous amount of moisture uh, moving on shore. So you've got the moisture, you've got the high tide, and you've got now the rotating storm. So all of those hazards out there. So uh, be very, very careful uh, as, you, uh, as you look at that. Um, in the next uh, half hour or so. So again, as I pull up uh, and, and get a little bit uh, closer here with the, uh, with the winds, you can see we have very gusty winds along the coastline. Up to 50, 55 is what Shea Gibson was talking about a little while ago, one of our weather uh, folks out there that uh, run uh, the, uh, some of the mesonet locations and, and the weather flow. But again, you can see all the way down to the south, even Kiowa, these are some of the sustained winds. These aren't the gusts. These are actually sustained 20, 25 miles an hour. So uh, as you look at that, you add some of the energy within the these convective cells and then you will see more wind even within that one system that's moving on shore uh, so that's why we're watching that very very carefully and this one little rotation I don't see any other rotating systems right now uh, you know down here to the south we'll keep an eye on that but this is the one that we were watching and that's why we had that uh, tornado warning issued and again it's just pushing now on up into northern Charleston County back on up into toward Georgetown County and again, that includes Winyaw Bay. You're under that severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, you folks up in McClellanville under a tornado warning. And again, the tornado warning boundary only goes to the uh, South Santee River uh, right there on the Georgetown County line. And the uh, folks up at Wilmington, uh, at the Weather Service office up in Wilmington, they issue all the warnings for Georgetown. And they are going with a uh, severe thunderstorm warning versus a tornado warning on this one, probably because it's going to encounter some friction. We're not seeing as much of a tight rotation, but uh, just to be safe, that's that's why uh, this one has been issued. So you're not going to rule out some damage as well. Uh, whenever you have a water spout move on shore, you could see, like I said, 60, 70, 80, 100 mile an hour winds are rotating around, even a small water spout, uh, and they can spin up pretty quickly. And again, as we watch all of this moisture transferring, pretty much Charleston northward, getting most of the heavy bands of rain with the system so far. So we've had the flooding in the metro. We're going to see more in northern Charleston County into parts of Berkeley County, back along some of the creeks right there, uh, not far from Lake Moultrie, but uh, up along the Cooper River and some of the tributaries off the Cooper River. Uh, we are looking at some flooding there, and that's going to continue all the way back up into Georgetown, eventually up in toward Horry County uh, over the next uh, little while. So again, as I zoom out a little bit, there's the center of the system. It's still down to our south. It is going to push to the north and east and get better organized as we make our way into uh, the next uh, little while. I'm going to kind of click ahead here and just see our, how we're doing with this velocity. And, and again, this is what we look for. Again, the inbound and outbound winds uh, for the system. And uh, we'll get a little bit closer here in northern Charleston County, uh, back down toward just southern parts of uh, Georgetown County. And now it's kind of pushing on shore here, a little diffused. Uh, but we do see, uh, you know, at least some broad rotation right there, uh, and we'll see if they uh, continue with that uh, one warning. Uh, but if you are up in Winyaw Bay, if you're up that way, uh, and again, even uh, as close as, like, uh, say, uh, from, say, uh, quarantine on over toward Belle Isle, uh, this area right there is pushing your way. So definitely use those tornado precautions that we talk about quite a bit as they uh, push on shore and pushes off to the north and east. And you can see on our algorithm, there are a couple of rotating areas, that one in particular that we were looking at up in the southern Georgetown County. And again, as we look at the alerts, let me pull that up right here on our screen, and you can see right there uh, that uh that one warning right here, that, of course, is the tornado warning issued by Charleston. That goes till 1145 in the severe thunderstorm warning for Georgetown County. And that is going to be including sub from the city southward, all of Winyaw Bay, and then back into Belle Isle, all the way back down along the, uh, the marshes, but also certainly along the lower Santee. Uh, and then just northeast of, of uh, say, um, 
Winyaw Bay itself back on up in toward the uh, intercoastal there. So we're just getting up toward Pauly's Island. Uh, so again, this is more for the thunderstorm activity versus the rotating storm, but we are watching still some pretty broad rotation right there. And again, these are the wind speeds. These are current 20, 25 mile an hour wind speeds in sustained. But when you talk about gusts, they're actually higher gusts, like I said, that we've been getting uh, here in the, uh, in the storm center. Again, look at that. That is a live picture over to Mount Pleasant. You can see that heavy rain. You can see just how high that tide is pushed up. And uh, we've had some power outages as well with all the wind out there. About 1,491 people are out of power in Mount Pleasant. About 1,120 people are out of power out toward Park Circle. So that's what we have right there. Dominion crews are always on standby. Whenever we have a storm like this, they stage and they be, they're, they're ready. Same thing with Santee Cooper and out to you know all of our uh, power providers like uh, uh, even out uh, Berkeley Electric, all the folks that are out there 24-7 uh, to keep the power on. But occasionally like this, when the wind kicks up so much, uh, it's easy to lose power. So again, as we take a peek right now at the tides, way above eight now, tide is high. So that's why we're seeing some of the flooding downtown. Like I said, 30 plus streets are either closed or being closed uh, because of the flooding. The rain forecast, again, this is in addition to what we have now has just been, we just updated the model here a minute ago. Notice we're up to about 2.62 more inches of rain because of the training of that moisture and what we're looking at as far as how much precipitable water we have and the timing of the storm moving by, we could see three plus more inches of rain. In particular up here, look at Kings Tree, Georgetown, you folks up there along the Black River, uh, right there along uh, the uh, lower Santee River uh, at Jamestown, uh, we might be talking about some moderate to heavy flooding here. Uh, because that rains on top of the rain we've already had. Uh, same thing down into this Charleston area, Beaufort, could see an inch and a half more or so, inch and a quarter more or so of rain on top of what we've already had. So uh, like I said, uh, Oscar out in John, James Island said about three plus inches at his house. We've seen some higher numbers. We've seen two and a half as kind of an average, uh, but this is the rainfall forecast. And the wind forecast, again, as we make our way through the lunch hour, we're talking 35, 40 mile an hour wind gusts now, but watch the clock right there. We're gonna take you right through into the afternoon and evening and as that storm cranks up and pulls away this is by about say midnight tonight we're still 30 35 mile an hour winds so and again we, we could see wind gusts up and over 40 after seven eight nine o'clock tonight as the storm pulls away it deepens the pressure gradient increases so it squeezes and that's why we'll see so much wind out there so Again, wind alert continues along the South Carolina coast, and um, that's going to continue through the afternoon and evening. And again, the three biggest impacts of the storm are the rainfall, three, maybe up to five inches of rain, certainly not out of the question. The wind gusts, we already talked about, up to 50 possible. We've seen a few already over 50. And then, of course, the flooding, uh, that potential uh, continues uh, to be a problem with the, uh, with the coastal flooding. So we'll watch that. Let me uh, go ahead and pull up once again. Uh, let's see if we can pull back the uh, radar. And uh, we'll pull up that uh, tornado warning, which uh, goes until 1145, which we were just talking about. I'm going to back up here through this and uh, kind of show you where we are as far as that, uh, that one area. Still a bit of a rotation up there in Georgetown. I'll back up a little bit. Again, it looks like that's now a little more on the broad side as far as the rotating storm, which is right there. And here come the alerts. Let's see what's out there now. Okay, so the tornado warning has been dropped, uh, but the severe thunderstorm warning continues till 1215 for Georgetown and the flood warning down along the south coast. So again, very active weather day. Be very careful out there. We'll keep you updated on air, online. Download the app. It's free. And we talk a lot during these, but we just want to keep everybody safe. We'll keep you updated to hear for everybody here at Live 5. I'm Live 5 Chief Meteorologist Bill Walsh in the Stormplex.